Gary, what is the title of your book? It's Destined to Reign, Joseph Prince. Okay. I'll try to show you a picture. <laughs> there it is. There's a picture. Joseph ah. Prince, Destined to Reign. Okay. What actually inspired you to read this book, Gary? Well, it was just a YouTube video that I got on my TV in the Apple TV in St Andrews. Okay. And I just started to listen to it and I thought, wow, this is incredible uh, teaching. It just really opened up my heart and really spoke to me so clearly. Then I saw he had a book, so I went out right away and bought the book, then kept reading the book, and it just transformed my whole life and my thinking. You know, so and what is the book actually about? It's called Destined to Reign. Basically, it says when you reign in life, you reign over sin, you reign over depression, over poverty, over every curse and over every sickness and disease. You reign over the devil and all his devices. Because in Romans 5.17, it says, For if by the one man's offence, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. You mentioned that this book had helped you. Can you tell us a little bit how it has helped you? I realised that when I'd been born again, and in the church, I hadn't been birthed properly. It had been started off with grace, but then it became works. It became the law. So you all, you were always trying to match up to, you know, what was expected in that. And I realised it's nothing to do with us. It's a gift. Grace is a gift. And uh, I, I just realised the whole thing about what Jesus Christ had actually done on the cross that you know it is finished he's paid for everything all our sins all disease all sickness and we cannot you know do things in our own effort it's got to be through the grace of christ that empowers us to do things because if we do it through our own effort we're always trying to add jesus plus something it's almost like you can't mix law and grace because if you do it's like pouring new wine into old wineskins it bursts. Plus, it says we are under uh, grace. We are not under law. So sin shall not have dominion or power over us. But if we put mixture, which I was doing, and going into law, mi mixing it, you infect the whole thing and this wineskins burst and you give sin power. The law gives sin power. And if we are not living from that point of total grace and total reliance on Jesus Christ, and trying to do things, you know, people say, you must try harder, try harder, do this, do that, do that. And it was the thing about uh, in John when it says, you know, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and he will forgive our sins. And I thought about it, you know, if you had to keep, I kept confessing all my sins. And that's all I would do, it'd be as well just sitting on the toilet because... I got sin conscious and I realised that, you know, he's paid the price once and for all. Because if you're going to confess your sins, you can't just confess the ones you know about. If you're worrying, unbelief, that's a sin. You know, it's not saying we don't confess our sins. We have that relationship where we'll come to God and say, look, God, I've blown it, forgive me. But you can't keep being sin conscious all the time. And it just really changed my whole perspective, my whole life, that it was the, the proper unadulterated gospel that, you know, there's just so much based on performance and meeting up and meeting uh, targets and how we live in Christ. And you realise that even though we're not perfect, we've got to realise who Jesus sees us. He sees us as perfect, forgiven, without blemish. When he sees us, he sees Jesus. And that's who we are. It just really freed me from condemnation, basically. Yeah. self-condemnation so would you say then gary that this book is a truthful book in your yeah, opinion i would say it was basically an un unadulterated gospel there's no mixture right you know there's so much you know if you don't hear good news it's like repentance 
it's like the prodigal son. If we did it nowadays, sometimes it'd be like, before you come near this house, you must make restitution, and I want your forgiveness. I'm not having a party for you, you know. Where it's actually the goodness of God that leads us to repent. It's like the woman yeah. uh, who was getting, you know, caught in adultery. It's always the goodness, and you know, we get into this lordship salvation, as we we'll call it, where we say to people, "If you want to come to Jesus, get clean first, have a bath." What's well, yeah. nothing to do with that? It's coming in his presence. So that's grace. It's metanoia, repentance. Change your mind, change your heart. And I used to think repentance was a, ooh, you know, a wild thing. But repentance could be a happy thing. It's a changing of the heart, a changing of the mind. Yes. And New Testament repentance is totally different, but bring Old Testament repentance in. And that's how a lot of the uh, revivals stopped because it was built on condemnation, a lot of it. And it stopped because it, it wasn't the too good to be true good news. It's like you hear about the rich from ruler and Zacchaeus. And I know they're not written side by side, but almost an example of the law because yes. he says, what must I do? I've done this, I've done that, I've done that. He says, you still go and give all your money to the poor. But he was that rich, he couldn't part with a penny. Zacchaeus, Jesus called him down from the tree and his heart was filled with grace. And he, he was so generous. He had to give back four times as much and come into my house. And, you know, so it's like if you're married, you know, if you're doing it by just law, mm -hmm. you just have to love my husband, you know. But if you do it by grace, you, you go way beyond. You know, when grace flows, it gives life. And we've got to stop being sin conscious. Because sin conscious is selfishness. Because you're looking at yourself all the time instead of Jesus. Yeah. When you get your eyes off, then you become con you, you have a condemning heart towards other people, a judgmental heart, you know. So it really taught me that, and I'm still working through it because I do feel condemned sometimes, and I do try and do things on my own strength. Yeah, we do. You know. And so, would you say then, Gary, that this book was a challenging book? It sounds like it. Very challenging to try and take my mind off myself and be sin conscious and actually accept, wait a minute, my God said to me, how finished is it? There's now no imputation of sin, you know, he's paid for it, you can't go back and pay for it again. It's a one off, one off it's done, it is finished. Yeah. And we need to walk in what he's paid for. And it's like, you know, we can get all oh, these songs when this happens, and the final day we'll be free. No, it's now. It's now we're free. And I want to walk in that. Because Paul, the Apostle Paul, today would be called the hyper grace preacher. Yeah. He would, because he was so clear about it. But we've always, it's a human nature, the sinful nature, we always want to add something onto it to make feel like we're doing something. Yeah. You know? But if we... Oh, it's another book called the Let Go Life as well that's connected to this. Mm. And I always want to do that, to let go and let God reign, let Jesus reign. And that way, it's not you'd sit about doing nothing. If you let him do it, you'll be more productive because you'll do these works out of a different spirit, out of the spirit of grace. Yes. You know, yes. It's, a, yeah. it's a different attitude. And I always think, if I hear anything that's not good news, I always question it. What is going on? Yeah. You know, this is not the good news. E even in John, the Gospel of John, that's the most bought single gospel in the world. And I realised how many times is the word repentance in there? It isn't. It's all believe, believe, believe. Yes. Repentance is definitely the gospel, but we've got it all condemnatory of that. You know, repentance could be... A, an amazing thing, you know, it could be yeah. to change your heart, metanoia, to change around, to, to, to agree with God, to repent. Yeah. You know? So, Gary, if I would say to you, how many marks out of 10 you give this book, how many would you give it? Out of 10? Mm. Well, for me, because where I was, I would give it 10, because I always remember being in my bed and thinking about stuff and God just woke me up and says, it is finished. Yeah, brilliant. It is finished. Yeah. 
and we've got to live from that. And I'm still, I'm not there. I'm trying to get there. Working. But I relax in his presence and realise that there's nothing I can do unless he empowers me. You know, unless God builds the house, the builders build it in vain. Yeah. And it's like if we, you know, I won't mention the preacher's name, but there's quite a lot of criticism because of the way he preaches. This is another guy. And I'm going, yeah, that's right. That's too soft and that's not right. And God showed me, wait a minute. These people don't realise they're getting preached and because their hearts are open, they're getting preached mm. into the goodness and love of God. <laughs> and the proper repentance is happening because they're, they're open and their hearts are getting changed by the, because it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance, metanoia. That's, that's right. And so, I thought, wow, you know. Yeah. So, Gary, to finish with, what would you say to people today if you were to persuade them to read this book? What would you say to them? I would just say check it out online because you can get it cheap online or if you might get a second-hand copy quite cheap. But to even look at some of Joseph Prince's uh, videos on YouTube and see how it speaks to you and what you think. Because he's got loads of books out now. I think that was the first book he brought out, I think. I'm not sure. Okay, so can you just show us that picture again and the title, Gary? Destined to Reign, Joseph Prince. Great. Gary, thank you for your comments this morning on the book. Thank you, Gary.